Maybe I'm just out of it. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and maybe I'm just a little bit out of the whole MCU thing right now. But I thought Black Panther Wakanda Forever was just average, mildly entertaining but also rather boring and bland superhero stuff that stretched out way too long over more than two and a half hours. Not really a bad movie, but just a bit tiresome. As if we have seen all of it before. And at this point, maybe we have. Now like always, I of course wanted to enjoy this movie. Since I have missed out on Thor Love and Thunder, it has been quite a while since I have seen an MCU movie on the big screen. I also think director Ryan Coogler, who also co-wrote the screenplay, is one of the most interesting filmmakers working for Marvel. But somehow I felt as if Wakanda Forever never kicked into the next gear, never gained enough momentum, never had enough oomph, and the character work and themes weren't enough to carry through a very forgettable and generic story that also mostly just features the usual action stuff and comedy beats. But let's start with the beginning. The filmmakers obviously face the huge challenge of continuing the story after the tragic death of the wonderful Chadwick Boseman. What they did here feels respectful, and the beginning certainly shows how much of an effect his performance, his charm had on the entire franchise. Marvel Studios decided not to recast, which I think would have also been fine, but instead to let his character die as well, and having his loss affect his kingdom and the people closest to him. And the most important one is of course his sister Shuri, played by Letitia Wright. She, as well as the other strong and quite memorable female characters, already showed their great presence in the first Black Panther, as well as in other MCU entries. Now she has to take the lead. Wakanda Forever is a story about grief and loss, but it never really touched me that much to be honest. And I'm not even completely sure why that is. Maybe because I felt that the movie is hitting a lot of the same notes as its predecessor. And that goes for many aspects. The central character, who has to take over the mantle and decide what cause is best for their people, the basic story that is about Wakanda having to defend themselves against a powerful foe, and that foe, in a similar manner to Killmonger, is motivated by the injustice that his people had faced by the rest of the world, or specifically by white slavers. Thematically, it of course fits to further explore these themes and questions but I feel that they were so much tighter and also deeper in the first film. Tenoch Huerta does a good job as Namor and there are a few scenes in which he's really intense, but his motivation feels much weaker and also way less personal. Apart from some beautifully visualized moments that tackle his origin story, in particular the depiction of an underwater birth, which should have been longer to be honest, I don't think he's really set apart from all the other rather weak MCU villains. And it's probably also because the movie has such a slow pace, low tension and is quite predictable. Another similarity or little riff on the first film is one of the early action scenes that's quite reminiscent in style of that car chase in South Korea. In moments like these they are trying to recapture some of that fun and cool of the predecessor. And while I enjoyed some of the dynamic between Shuri and Okoye, it's also just a bit lackluster and just the usual MCU stuff. For a while there, the movie is told as kind of an escort quest, in which Shuri and Okoye seek out and then try to protect the new character and later also superhero Ironheart, played by Dominic Thorne. This is of course a staple of MCU movies, to introduce new heroes in smaller roles that then become bigger or get their own movies or series later on. Unfortunately though, I felt that the movie never gives her that much own personality or flavor. In the whole middle section, she's basically a non-entity, only to then get her own superhero thing to do later on. Or rather, just to go through the blandest superhero motions of getting a suit and take part in some generic superhero battle. What could have been a strong and interesting and maybe also fun friendship is really just the usual stuff. And unfortunately, I felt so with most characters. Shuri has a character arc, even though it's also super predictable. And the other characters carry some variation of the theme of loss. But to me, it felt as if the movie really just wants to put them into some kind of cool looking superhero outfit later on. Tone wise, it's rather serious and somber, aside from the usual snarky remarks and little jokes that were more missed than hit for me this time, but because it all felt very surface level to me, 
the seriousness or bleakness just became tiresome. The only thing that really excited me every now and then was the pretty cool soundtrack. The fresh sounding score by Ludwig Göransson and the spirit to also use some songs. And also the willingness to sometimes don't put any music to the action. Like in Ryan Coogler's previous film, and this goes for many MCU titles, there are some nice visual touches to be found. Like the cool water bombs or the already mentioned underwater birth. And then there's also a lot of stuff that just looks bland and uninspired. The whole action climax for example is once again set in this fairly unspectacular setting. Only that this time around, in contrast to the previous film, I wasn't really invested at all in what was going on between our heroes and our villains. Between Shuri and Namor. I was just not invested. There's so little momentum, the pace feels so off, the story takes forever to get going and it's always very clear where it's going. It's of course wonderful and this should go without saying how much the movie's doing for representation, but it's not really adding that much new and the whole introduction of Neymar and his people to the MCU feels a bit lackluster to be honest. All the underwater stuff doesn't have that awe effect, if it weren't for the use of a song. And his closest allies don't really leave that much of an impact either. And again, a runtime of more than two and a half hours feels very unnecessary for this kind of story. There are a lot of scenes and moments that don't add that much to the story or characters. And Martin Freeman's and Julia Louis Dreyfus parts are there to fit into the bigger MCU tapestry, but really don't add anything meaningful or exciting to this movie. So, in German I'd say, Black Panther Wakanda Forever kommt an seinen starken Vorgänger leider nicht wirklich ran. Viel zu sehr imitiert er diesen und kommt dabei nie so richtig auf die Sprünge. So verkommen die mehr als zweieinhalb Stunden leider zu einer echten Geduldsprobe mit nur wenigen Höhepunkten. I give Black Panther Wakanda Forever 5 out of 10. It's more like 5.4, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Black Panther Wakanda Forever. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd and also on Patreon simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.